Good morning. Today marks the last school mass of 2020. As we look back, who would have thought we would wear masks to school, watch masks from our classrooms, travel in pods, and social distance? I'm not sure about you, but my hands are dry and rough from the constant washing and sanitizing each day. Through it all, we have made it work. We all worked very hard and put forth a lot of effort. I think we've done a pretty good job. This third week of Advent continues to bring us hope as the coming of our Savior is so close. We pray for better things to come in 2021 as we await Jesus' birth. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we are growing closer to welcoming our Savior at Christmas. We are in the third week of Advent, and today we begin on this December the 17th, the O Antiphons. Today we focus on wisdom. It's also a very uh, special day for our principal, Ms. Tabor. Today is her birthday, and so we will be offering this Mass uh, for her on this, her birthday. So as we gather, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light for those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O oh God, creator and redeemer of human nature, who will that your word should take flesh in an ever-virgin womb, look with favor on our prayers that your only begotten Son, having taken to himself our humanity, may be pleased to grant us a share in his divinity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob called his sons and said to them, Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. You, Judah, shall your brothers praise, your hand on the neck of your enemies. The sons of your father shall bow down to you, Judah, like a lion's whelp. You have grown up on prey, my son. He crouches like a lion's recumbent, the king of beasts, who would dare rouse him? The scepter shall never depart from Judah or the mace from between his legs while tribute is brought to him and he receives the people's homage. The word of the Lord. The response is, justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice, justice shall, shall flourish in his time, time and, and fullness, fullness of, of peace, peace forever. O oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice, justice shall, shall flourish, flourish in, in his time, time 
and and fullness fullness of peace peace forever. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Justice Justice shall flourish in his time, and and fullness fullness of of peace peace forever. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice Justice shall flourish in his time, in fullness of peace forever. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the sun his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice Justice shall flourish in his time, in fullness of peace forever. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram. Ram the father of Amenadab. Amenadab became the father of Nashon. Nashon the father of Salmon. Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoabim, Rehoabim the father of Abijah, Abijah the father of Asaph, Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, Joram the father of Uzziah, Uzziah became the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Ahaz, Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jehoiakim, his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jehoiakim became the father of Sheatetel. Sheatetel became the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abud. Abud became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Akim. Akim the father of Eliud. Eliud the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Matthan. Matthan the father of Jacob. Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Thus the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good morning, everyone. I don't know if I got any of those names correctly but the trick is when you're doing genealogies especially going back so many so many centuries is you just have to say them quickly and say them right over and over and over and then no one questions you we heard a lot of interesting names and as we're doing with NTI just to make sure everyone's watching and paying attention if you were to take a quiz I think one great question to ask would be how many generations were we talking about today 
How many generations between Abraham to David, David to the Babylonian exile, the Babylonian exile to Christ? All of those are 14 generations. And so that got me thinking today how important it is of our own genealogy and our own ancestry. You know, we are who we are because of our parents, our grandparents, our aunts and uncles and our cousins, going all the way back as far as we can. And there are some databases and whatnot out there that will help us figure out who our ancestors are. And the beauty of it is, is no family is perfect, except for the Holy Family. Sometimes the far, farther back we go with our families, we may find out things that we really didn't want to know about. Sometimes the further back we go, there were more occasions for sin and different laws being broken. But that doesn't mean we are who we are today because of that. We are who we are today because of Jesus Christ. No one's perfect. No family. No matter how good it looks on the outside, you never know what's going on on the inside. And the only perfect family is Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Today begins on December the 17th, a week long into the O Antiphons. And today we focus on wisdom. Sapientiae. There's a beautiful statue of the Blessed Mother holding Jesus in her, in her arms, really sitting her on her on her leg, sitting him on her leg, and it's called Sadi Sapientiae, the seat of wisdom. That Jesus Christ is the seat of wisdom. And no matter how good or bad your grades are, even someone who doesn't get all A's can be wise. And in fact, some smart people lack wisdom. So when I talk about the two, remember being smart is a gift. You should thank God for that. But it doesn't necessarily mean the same as being wise. Being smart will take you so far. Being wise will take you even further. And that's what we pray today, to be more wise to make good choices because even the smartest people we know can make bad choices. But the wise person always chooses the good. The wise person prays and thinks about and discerns before making a decision. A wise person watches what they say and thinks before they act. A wise person places Christ at the center of their lives, and focuses on the light. A wise person focuses on what it means to be full of hope. And that's what we pray for today. To be more wise. To grow in our wisdom of God and of the church. Because in a little over a week, the seat of wisdom will be born and we will celebrate his birth on Christmas. I want you to enjoy your Christmas break. I want you to take some time to be wise in your choices and your decisions, to give thanks to God for the gifts that you will receive and for your family that surrounds you and prepare for a new year to come. 2021 will be full of joy and happiness and sadness and pain. But if our wisdom increases, and if we truly appreciate who we are and where we came from, we will have a prosperous and joy-filled new year. But before we get to that, let's prepare our hearts and our souls for the birth of our Lord.
Let's all stand together and offer our prayers and our petitions, those that we voice and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all members of the church, may the light of Christ remove all darkness and sin from our midst. We pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may the justice and mercy of the Holy Spirit guide them in their service to their people. We pray to the Lord. For families and communities whose members are estranged from one another, may Christ bring them healing and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. For this, our faith community, may the grace we receive this Advent help us to bear good fruit during the Christmas season as we strive to increase our hope and our wisdom. We pray to the Lord. For all who have gone before us in faith, may they receive their final inheritance in Christ's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for our principal, Miss Tabor, on this her birthday, whom we remember at this holy mass. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, you are the seed of wisdom. You are wise, and it is your family, Joseph, and Mary, and all of us who seek to do your will. Lead us where you need us to go, and help us to always have faith and hope in you. For we make these in all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Let us stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify these gifts of your church, O Lord, and grant that through these venerable mysteries we may be nourished with the bread of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Ozan in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Ozan in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall. Together we pray our spiritual communion prayer, especially for those of you who cannot join us for the Eucharist today. We pray that our Lord will come into your heart and soul as we give thanks to God for this opportunity. Together we pray, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by these divine gifts, Almighty God, we ask you to grant our desire that aflame with your spirit we may shine like bright torches before your Christ when he comes, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I hope you have a blessed and a safe day. Continue to work hard. Continue to prepare uh, for the Christmas break that's come upon us. And then pray uh, as we wait in joyful hope uh, for the birth of our Lord and for a safe and prosperous and happy new year. And we do hope to see you all very, very soon. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.